Uh, Priya, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, so let's start. Uh, others can join. Um, this is going to be a one-hour session, and uh, it is going to be primarily covering um, some fundamentals of design, right? So while it says that user interface design do's and don'ts, uh, what we are going to be um, deep diving into is uh, what are the fundamentals of design? Okay, some of us have the design background, some of us could have attended design colleges, some of us may, may not, some of us are just passionate about design and so we have organically come into this field and um, enjoyed working on designs, right, and may have missed some of the fundamentals that, that are part um, of design and uh, the ones that have gone through design or art colleges, uh, it is going to be a great recall for um, others right so let's uh, uh while i say you know we are going to be uh, diving deep because we have a limit of an hour we might just brush upon some of these concepts right but we can circle back and we can circle back and have another session if uh, we need to have one okay so to start with what are we going to be uh, looking at today right we are going to be looking at two uh, you know, one very important concept, okay? The concept is visual direction, right? And uh, then what contributes to visual direction is um, uh, the elements of visual communication, right? So these are terms that you typically use during your academic uh, education and uh, while talking design, but not on a daily, you know, work that you have, right? And why not? Uh, is something that we can think about, but we have to start using more and more of the design language so that uh, there is a good vocabulary that uh, we use, right? So let's start with uh, the first, you know, let's just look at understanding uh, visual direction and that we can, so uh, Priya, are you there, right? We can start with our first poll. Sure, just to do. Yeah, so we have two slides here, okay? So for everybody, we have two slides here. This is one slide and, okay, let me just put the pull up on the side and this is another slide. These are two slides. What we have to really look at uh, and see is what is giving you the best reading uh, flow, okay? When you're reading this quote, what helps you read? Which is the one that helps you read? Um, Emerson looking on the outside the slide or Emerson looking inside the slide. I'll just give you half a minute to respond. Yeah. Okay. So are we done? Anybody? remaining okay so i will again switch so this is a this is b and this is a sorry this is a and this is b which helps you to effectively read this code because it is the emotions quote that you know one is trying to read and understand between slide a and b which helps one to read Okay, now within the two responses, what you see is, is the poll uh, report visible to you guys? Uh, the one that I'm sharing on screen? Yes. Yeah, thank you. So what you see is there is, and don't worry, you know, we don't have who's, who's responded to what option. It is not going to be judged on anything. So feel free to respond, uh, you know, as your first thought comes in. Right. So what you see is that lot of uh, most of people have responded to as B. Okay. And the reason why B is the correct option is if you look at, let me just, I will just end this poll. Okay. And I will close it. Okay. So now what, what do, we, what, what is the composition that we have here? The composition that we have here is Okay, 
you can stop the poll uh, the first poll we can discontinue the yes, first yes i have poll. discontinued yeah thank you so what you see on slide a is you have the quote here you have the name of the person who has quoted it and you have the figure here but what you see is his gaze is out of the out of the composition okay if you look at if you look at option b what you have here is you have the gaze pointing inwards right so the advantage is that while you are reading the quote you know you you look, read at the quote because you are reading from the left to the right you read the quote somewhere you get attracted to you know this gaze and you are returned back here right so that is the advantage of this composition okay so if you otherwise in your daily life you know when you are on the road and you see some people gazing in one direction typically what happens is you also start gazing in the same direction right not knowing you know very very uh, 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 subconscious you just start gazing on the same direction that is that is one fundamental that you should always use while you are directing or composing your work right so this is a very small concept of we'll get into concepts so this is just for this is more like a warm up okay let's go to the next one now next again is a poll okay you have two images here what we see here is you have the quote you have the picture of mona lisa looking at you and this next one is again mona lisa now she the portrait is on the left hand side and the quote is here right the intent is to read the quote understand the quote and right so which among these according to you are uh, you know more effective priya can we start the second poll yes okay so this is option b and sorry this is option a this is a where mona lisa's picture is on the right and this is option b where mona lisa's picture is on the left and just a food for thought is mona lisa is not her gaze is not looking towards the uh, coat but her posture is towards towards the coat right just to make this a bit more complex and interesting here it is her back towards the coat and i'm not hinting anything it is completely everybody looks at things differently but we are targeting to the most uh you know there is a lot of study that happens on eye tracking right so there and there is the study we are going to be also talking about that study okay all right so let's look at the poll okay so most of the responses that we have is a and we have the least responses as b and that is interesting what we've asked is for effective reading of the code composed in mona lisa's painting which option would you prefer yeah so we can end this poll what we see here is that uh, stop sharing let me check this okay so what we see here, see here is that while we have the quote on the left hand side and not while we have mona lisa looking directly towards you and in comparison to what we see here in the next slide where you have again the image of mona lisa on the left hand side with the quote here give it a thought that when somebody is looking at you right you usually look back at that person directly in the eyes okay that is one thought another and this is really designed as in really designed thinking in depth okay so just give thoughts to all of these aspects that i'm talking about the second aspect is you are usually reading from left to the right right so where do you want so what happens here is that you are reading and this is what you know these are some of the polls or these are some of these um uh 
I would say research that has been done and there are a lot of responses on these researches, okay? And there are varied thought processes. One is that while you're reading from the left to the right, when you're starting to read this, you know, you know that somebody is gazing at you. So you, you know, you automatically, you just look at that portion, but then you want to read this again. You want to complete this reading, okay? So there is some kind of a friction, some kind of a struggle versus when you look at here, you know, you, you land up here because your the research has proved that the reading habit is from the left to the right, right? So you always start from here. You look at the gaze, you move ahead and you stop here. You may not want to go back is because your, your gaze is complete, okay? These are different thoughts. But what I'm trying to say is that there is no one law or one uh thumb rule that can be applied to every picture not so there has to be some kind of a thought process some kind of validations that will have to go through uh, for every composition that we have in design okay let's understand why this is a bit of complex okay so moving ahead there was this research do done by the nielsen norman group uh, which was released in 2006 that said that if you are reading on the net uh, or on the web, uh, you usually, uh, they did about, you know, what, uh, how many, um, I think they did more than 96 or more. I don't really uh, remember the exact number on how many eye tracking uh, observations that they, tests that they did, right? But what they found out of this test is that people typically start from the left read the first sentence in detail, uh, refer to the next, uh, you know, some information, and then quickly browse to the end of the page. And if you look at this, you know, this is all uh, heat maps. What you see is all of this red is where the uh, eye has, uh, you know, stopped at that place, has uh, fixated, and gone through the information, right? If you look at all of this, it is it is making more like an F kind of a form, the F kind of a shape, right? Let's move ahead, 2017, okay? What we saw was in 2006. There was a lot of, uh, you know, research uh, and uh, designs based on that concept all through. There was, it, this whole research was challenged after some time. But in 2017, they released one more report and they said, yes, uh, still what we've done one more round of research on this, we still stick to the fact that not only on desktop, but also on mobile, what we see is there is an F pattern that is always there. If it, what do you mean by an F pattern? When you start reading, we are talking about reading. When you start reading, you read the first part in detail move on, jump to the next part, see, you know, if this information is interesting, jump again, you know, and that is how, when you slide, slide to start moving down, you know, your basically your reading starts reducing and you're just browsing quickly to see, scanning quickly to see if this is interesting enough, okay? And this also is true for Arabic, where you, the reading mode is right to left. You just have to flip that but the whole concept of the flipped F is also true for, with Arabic, okay? So these are reading patterns that you have to keep in your mind as designers, okay? Moving ahead, let's look at more, okay? Let's look at more heat maps. And something, you know, in the lines of the pictures and compositions that we saw with the quotes, what we see here is again a heat map and these are, you know, I'm sure you have heard about all of these things like, you know, there are eye tracking devices that help. And there is a lot of data that is captured from a lot of user testing to identify what is the heat map that is getting created. There are fixations that are there. People stop here and glance for a longer time and then they quickly browse, right? So if you look at this, you know, if you are looking at uh, an e-commerce site and if, or if it is an advertisement of something, right, what do you expect the person to really be fixated to? You want this information to be read, right? If it's an e-commerce site, you want the person to be looking, also looking at the cost 
of the product you want also want the user to glance quickly glance through the to the um select button right to add to cart button or do you want to keep the user fixated to this image which is of course a baby's image looking at you very cute and all of that right so there is a thought that is there now what happened is they changed the di direction of the image and what you see here is that yes the, you, you know there is a fixation at a lot of places that yes because it's a cute child of course they're going to be looking people are going to be looking at here there is fixation on the headline there's a fixation on the start of this text and then there is a quick browse through the text to see you know if there is you know, less less and less interesting right and to define how the model starts is you know start from the center of the screen so this is one if you're able to see the if, i'll just read it out this is one this is two right and there are a lot of these fixations around the face here and then there is a flow okay and these are reading gaze paths or reading directions now what happened when they changed the image again starts from the center okay most of the times if you read through about the eye tracking or gaze paths what you will see is that typically whenever somebody lands on the page and even on an empty page for you know just to make it more interesting even if you're looking at an empty page you know generally the gaze lands on the center of the screen not exactly the center but somewhere slightly above the center of the screen and that after that it moves to there are one two <clears throat> three and four points that are there that is where it moves based on which are whichever is more attractive right whichever is just pulling that with a force that is pulling your attention and we can talk about that in detail later not i have not covered uh, that in this session but there is uh, there is a um, a definite structure to that also so what you see here, as I said, is that you have lesser fixations here. See, you have more fixations here, you have lesser fixations here, and then you are moving ahead to the title, right? And that is what the intent is, that you need stronger fixations here, you need less, lesser fixations here, okay? If you look at user interfaces, again, you see the heat map, you start seeing, again, a, some kind of a vague kind of a F pattern that is there, you land up usually on the center if it's empty or you know you start reading in detail starts the heat map starts reducing the heat starts reducing at the bottom it's a picture you know you will always start with uh, you know you draw your attention there so there is while there are structures to this you know how what we definitely can do as designers is we can have compositions on our pages to direct this uh, direct the eye across your page right whenever we are doing user interface designs we know what what is the purpose and the intent of the design right and we know what are the elements that have to go into that page then becomes important for us to understand how do we compose in the manner that we give an eye um, path or a you know visual path or a, a path for the user to look next look there you know that kind of a direction and that has the, these things have to be very conscious that happen um within our minds when we are when we are doing layouts when we are putting things in uh, in the layout in certain color and size and all of that yeah these are details that we look ahead of. let's move on okay let's now go through a quick poll uh priya if you can uh, bring up the poll the poll the third poll how to communicate the visual flow right what are the aspects of communicating the visual flow okay just to frame the same question in a different manner is how to lead the eye through the design okay whoever is looking through your design how what are the what are the elements and here what we have is not a single uh select but multiple selects so how do you create that rhythm on the page
So I'll just be quiet for a moment, give you some time to go through the options. Okay, we have received five, eight responses, 10 responses. Great. So you have received 13 responses. Good to look at. So what do we, you know, when we start thinking about what is that a visual flow can be uh, really, you know, controlled through? Using pictures to give direction to the visual flow. Yes, that is right. Uh, however, there, it could be something that may, may not happen. We may not have visual uh, photographs to really help us. Okay. So that is why that is true. Uh, there is going to be a situation, as I said, you know, you might not have visuals. Creating a clear hierarchy, extremely important, right? In our minds, we have to understand what is the hierarchy of my information. What is the most important information and how does it cascade? Emphasis to key content, again, very important. If you have to define a flow, what do you decide, right? You have to, if you think about it like a story, right? I'm just giving a different analogy to break this uh, thing. Is uh, who is the hero of your uh, story, right? And who are the other characters of your story? Who is the other important character of your story within the story? You think about, you identify, give that a thought, okay? What I have seen and which is sad is that when we have a requirement, we just open XD and we start working. Are we studying content? Are we studying and asking what is the purpose? What am I trying to do here? What is what is going to be making this layout successful versus what is not going to make it success, successful, right? Intent kya ye page ka is a question that we have to ask ourselves, right? And that is when you know the intent and the purpose. That is when you're going to be saying, okay, then, therefore, if the intent is this, this is the hero. These are the side actors. And within the side actors, these are other, you know, important side actors, things like that, right? So emphasis to the key content and adding colors to organize. While it can be true at certain times, you have to be very, very careful. You know, colors is not the only way to organize. There are a lot of elements. Color is just one part of it. So there is, as a, you know, in this poll, there is nothing that which is, uh, so there is all is in a way true, but it is also important that how you use everything is the key, right? So like, for example, emphasis, how much emphasis? Colors, how do you handle colors? Hierarchy, while you understand hierarchy, how do you control that hierarchy so that it doesn't become really overpowering, right? Uh, using pictures, yes. Okay, so I will... Uh, while I move on, I would want to just pause for a moment and see if there are questions or thoughts. Okay, so let me move ahead. So when we said, you know, that was the poll that we asked, uh, what is that drives, gives a visual flow? There are two things that we saw in the heat map and the gaze flow was that what is the visual weight, right? What is that visual weight and what is that visual direction? These are two important things. It's like a seesaw. You have to really be able to balance this, both of these things, uh, to be able to create a, create a good composition in a user interface. And I'm going to be talking about the more static aspects of user interface design. I'm not going to be talking about the interaction part of the user interface design in this session today. Okay. More about the correct way of layouting or, you know, thought more than correct. It is more about, you know, you should put, we should put a thought in way, the way we com compose our user interfaces. What contributes to visual weights and visual direction is a big list of things. It is the elements with the right size, color, the right color value, position of that element, what is the texture that we are using there, what's the shape, orientation, right? 
concepts of grids, shape of element, right? Okay, I've just repeated, I think shape is twice. <clears throat> Alignment and balance. Proximity, how close is one thing to the other? How far is the other thing, right? Are you creating grouping and all of that? Structural skeleton, again, some of these concepts. Principles of just order, typography, all of these. We are not going to be doing all of this today, right? Because these are topics in their own spaces that you know one can spend a lot of time understanding and deep diving into them but we can have you know if we decide to have some sessions follow ups after this we can decide to jump into those we are going to be primarily looking at this part today just this list again a very very elementary and basic thing as i said you know we are going to be looking at fundamentals today of design and then link it to uh, user interface. So this is a fundamental, as I said, of design and uh, look at it from a user interface standpoint. We know size, right? If you have a big object on the screen, it is going to be, it's, it's going to be just shouting at you and saying, look at me. So when you land upon this page, if you're landing up on Behan's page, what is the first thing that really shouts at to you is, of course, this image is looking at you, but if imagine that is this is not the image, you know, this is where you land up your gaze, correct? So you're not really reading from Behance for you to discover like, just because we are saying there is a F reading pattern, we are not saying that you're going to be reading here. I'm saying let's not get confused with some of the uh, published uh, reports that are there. You have to understand what it really means and be able to apply it properly, right? So where does your gaze land up? Your gaze lands up here. Okay, why? Because this is the most important aspect is that you are come here to look at portfolios on Behance. So while you come here, it directs you somehow to this part. While you see here, you know, at a moment, you just start seeing these arrows and you look up and you look at these aspects. These small elements that are there, which are some of these are videos, some of these, whatever this is, right? You look here and then you again come back to this. Right? So this is the pattern that they have established. And why did they do this as bold? Imagine that this would have been as, you know, this font size, smaller font size. Typically, somebody would have started from here, looked at this because this is the brightest, in the uh, you know, something that is glaring strong on screen and started looking at this and then come down here. But it is not really, then what means, what, what do what does that mean if you have a reduced font side and you are not giving somebody to land on you are not giving a visual direction to the interface right what you are doing is there are 10 elements that you have been asked to put it on page you have said okay this is the grouping let me put it in this manner i have a styling for heading 2 i have a styling for heading 1 and all of that so i'll put it in a particular manner right but are we saying, is there a thought from a user interface designer? What is the, who's the hero? Here is your hero, right? This is where the main meat is of the page. And why this is at the top is because you're not supposed to be missing this. This is something that is now, and this is that is happening in pro pro progress. So don't miss this out also. This is also key. That is why the, it is positioned at the top, right? Now let's look at when, from a size perspective, things go wrong. This says you should not do this. Okay, why does it say you should not do this? Why size is very important? You know, now, for example, this is a big font size here. Okay, how big is also an important aspect, right? Because you have space, are you going to be utilizing the complete space that is there? is a question is it going to be simpler for somebody to just you know read five words on a page do i have to read it like this you know i have to quickly read it right so how how it is very also important it is also very important to define if it is a size how big that size has to be if it has to be a landing there how big that size should be right so that's a thought now, while we will not have 
we, we don't have a rule book by saying this is the only way of doing it then designers job would have been extremely easy we could have just eventually made an ai to design right but we don't want to do that and design is not simple but what i'm trying to say here is that there is a thought of all of these aspects that we are going to be talking today there has to be thought that has to be given to all of these aspects yeah i'll move on to the next one which is color we understand colors we understand warm colors are something that um, are you know something that jump on the screen and this is a very good example of that right so here if i give you just a second to read this because that is important right warm colors advance into the foreground and way more than cool colors right you see that the weight of the warm colors is higher than the weight of the cool colors that you see on the screen blue that gives a feeling of comfort red gives a feeling of urgency and attention so there is an action that you are expected to do right that is what so then therefore if you have the knowledge of these colors then use these colors very thoughtfully if you look at the, on the page what have they done they have just you know very subtly put the user interface but what is why is the user coming here they are coming here to understand the dashboard where are things that is that are going wrong dashboards are for that purpose where are things that are good as expected something that is an outlier these are things that you're coming here for a dashboard right and just not a dashboard just everywhere on screens wherever you're using colors use those more thoughtfully you understand the the meaning of each color of course brands have their own colors but when you are using the brand color also there has to be a thought to that and the next slide exactly exactly says that okay not this one the next one so here this slide says okay colors are there and they are used here for organization purposes just now go more a bit more deeper into this understanding to do they have put as bluish this is orange this is green this is red cancel this is red logically makes absolute sense somebody in our uh, brainstorming decided that you know this has to be there but is this really giving you the kind of direction that it is supposed to give is this something that is really uh you know uh helping you take a decision i don't think so what i see also is the layouts at times are very very dull okay to make it sophisticated uh there is a lot of use of white and grays because there was and i know that you know some time in the last 2 3 years there has been a lot of grays that were used whites and grays but the whole thing cannot be absolutely dull right so there has to be some kind of color yes but some strength to that and some kind of an attention that these colors have to draw look at the way of use of colors here right what is the advantage what is that gaze you know if any ways because keep that whole concept that we started with right are you directing the gaze of the user most important your value while we are going through each slide keep asking yourself are we helping the gaze of the user is this where you want the user to really end reach on this page or is this something that is the most important so would you put colors here just because you want to say that each timeline and each item means something would you do that right okay let's look at one more not to do aspect of colors is consider that as i said you know some brands could have a red color in their main branding colors and the customer has said please use our branding colors think about this this is a bank app okay look at this okay this is the first page where you have which, which is welcoming you and you have to log in uh, or sign in you have to sign in here click on next look at this right become a client why are you so when we are saying red is for urgency yes but it is also for alarm i am already feeling some kind of a stress when i have you know there is a red which is telling me become a client 
which is going to be related to my money, my hard-earned money. Would I want to do that? While if there is going to be a, some kind of a biometric recognition or something like that, it is going to be, I'm going to be even more worried about it. Then I'm supposed to be giving my phone number. If, okay, which is again in red. Again in red, I'm supposed to be giving an email ID and then I have to click next. Now the interesting part starts, okay. There is a red that is given here for a menu, which is in three dots, which is a layered menu, but it is in red. If it is in three dots, that means it is layered and not very important, right? Then why is it in red is my question. Okay. Again, the use of reds here. Look at this. Okay. There is debit, which is minus 2000. Imagine in your account when there is a debit, of course, some, no, are, gaya paisa. When there is money that comes, oh, I got money, great. So you already feeling, no, this is the appropriate use of red, but what about everything else then? So what are you, you're confusing your customer that when things go in minus, you are showing red and still you continue to show red everywhere else. See the strength of colors and the misuse of colors that the user interface designer is not even thought about. What that user interface did, designer did was just blindly said, red chahiye customer ko red branding hai, toh humko use karna padega. Somebody from the, somebody from your team, technical expert, business analyst, project manager, somebody, you know, just came by and said, hey, use karo, button ko use karo, red color. What, was it a good thing to be done? Right? Okay. Let's look at the third poll now. Just since we spoke about vocabulary, right? It is very important to use appropriate design vocabulary. We know you, right? Any basic color uh, in our color palette, we use, we call it as you. When you is mixed with white, what is it called? So Priya, can we bring up the fourth poll, please? Again, uh, you don't have to worry. Nobody's names are going to be, uh, uh, we are not capturing names. So feel free to respond. Don't do a Google, bad habits. Okay. So when you are, this is the you and you are mixing white into this. So what would you call this? Would you call this, I am using the shades of red. Or I'm going to say, I'm using the tints of red. Or are we saying, I'm using the pastels of red. Are we saying we are going to be using the tones of red? Okay, we have 11 responses. We have 12, 12 responses. And the leading one is tones. And here is the response. The pastels in here is a distractor, okay? P pastels here is more like a common kind of a language. It is not a designer's tool, okay? It's not a designer's tool. You just, you know, as my pastel color ka, uh, you know, something dress I've put or something like that, you'll say. But it's more like a colloquial uh, term, pastels, just as a distractor. Shades, tints, and tones are the, are the, uh, are the verbiages of, verbiages right so you you know which is the pure color tints is something that is you have the you plus the white in it so these are the tints of red these are when you mix a gray it is the tones of red use the tones of red right and when you use a uh, mix black that is when you say i'm using the shades of red right so think about it, remember in your mind is when you are in a shade, you are in a shadow and shadow is a dark, okay? Just uh, something for you to remember, okay? So that's a shade, that's a tone. Tone is something when you mix a gray and the white, when you mix a white, it is a tint. Tint, tones, and shades, okay? Good verbiages to use and remember. Now let's talk about values, right? 
uh, what is the value you are when you see using colors you are saying okay i want to yeah, i want to make it darker shade i want to make it a lighter tint and all of that so these are values right and that helps your user interface design so this is a good example right like for example you know if we are saying and the intent why this is a good example is the intent of this graph is to be really uh, you know quickly identify who are the people who are online Okay, this is a different language altogether as I'm trying to interpret it that, okay, who are online, who are, you know, not usually online and there are people who are lesser online, something like that. Uh, so this is something that really helps rather than using different colors for each of these. This really gives you the kind of weight that it demands, right? This is the most important. This is secondary. This is tertiary. So you use values of colors to always, as we said, first we start by thinking ki, who's the hero? Who is the secondary? Who's the tertiary who are supporting me, right? When you have that in your mind, when you start that with, the, that is your first step that you start with, everything follows, right? From shape to color to value, everything follows. You have to keep going back. Mera hero kaun hai? Usko humko sabse achha dress up karna hai. He has to be on the screen who is going to be really jumping out of the screen, right? Something like that. When you use values, when you don't use a lot of values, right? What is happening here? This is again very washed out. This is big in size. See, they have used the one concept, one fundamental, which is the size aspect they have used. But is it... Is it making sense? It is not. It is looking, where do I start? Okay, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this. And then what? Very washed out. Here, look at the value. Like, for example, you know, this is something that you have to, it's a product and you're looking at overview and review. What review should I be giving more attention to? Should I be giving more attention to overview? Very confusing. Right? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Because we have a time bounded thing. So this is very important. The, the, the position of things, right? Very, very important. Most important elements in the prompt is in uh, is prominent positioning, direct the viewers to other sections, allows to follow a flow of information in the required sequence. Okay. So what is expected here? You are in Airbnb, you are looking at these picture, beautiful pictures. This is red that is drawing my attention. So where are you placing things? I want to place this as show map. Very important aspect, right? When I am asking the user when from Airbnb, when I come to this, when I'm looking at this, I'm not missing this out. So your position becomes extremely important. Your center of where do you want to go? What do you want to search for? Is it the center of the page? Very important. But we are not saying that everything that is important is that should be at the center of the page. But there is a thought that is important that where do I place it? Because the position is important and the, the direction in which that we should expect the user's glance to look at objects landing is extremely important. Again, you're looking at the same uh, example. We see that, okay, there is, you land up here, you read this, you look at this image quickly, you just, you know, glance at it because it's so big, you are not going to miss it out. And then you come here, right? And then you say, buy now. Okay. What is that whole position, right? What is this position that is there that is so awkward? Something that is not something that is comfortable, right? Why is the buy now on the left-hand side? Have you given me a lot of information before you position the buy now, right? And this seems to be so aggressive that, okay, you have the, uh, the, uh, the value here and you have the buy now just besides it, right? Are you giving a lot of good quality information before your position in buy now? Is there some kind of an understanding what the, you know, if this is an expensive item, how would you really, how much of information would you really give? How interesting will you bring, make this up before you're positioning the buy now? Is a question. Texture, I will not talk about texture too much because we rarely use a lot of texture. But texture, yes. Uh, one is, you know, there are textures. So you see all of these 
uh, elements here. Now, this is some kind of a rough kind of a texture when you want to uh, show it that it is rustic or you want to show it that is very organic or very earthy, right? That is when you give some of these textures, when you give smooth textures or smooth um, feel to things, you know, it looks very luxurious and it looks very comforting. It also looks very human because humans' bodies don't have angles and it does, you know, it's like smooth. That is what, uh, how it is, the eyes perceive it. We are talking about eyes and the perception of eyes. Okay, when there is no texture, right? It looks very professional. It looks very crisp, right? If you look at a lot of these new apps, uh, when we started, you know, the user interface was back six, seven years back. Every object, every button, every element used to have some kind of a texture. Something used to be there on the screen which had textured, right? But now that aspect is lesser and lesser because we are saying the user doesn't have time to keep appreciating some of these. They want to really do a quick job and move ahead. So you see less, lesser and lesser use of textures, okay? This is a bad example of texture because you can't read the text which is in the foreground, okay? Uh, again, a bad example of textures. Too many things that are happening on the screen. Uh, I'll move ahead. Not very interesting to look at. Shapes, okay? Again, right? What are uh, organic shapes? And what are geometric shapes? And what are abstract shapes? If you look at this first, right? I know this is all very attractive but if you look at what is what are organic shapes like they are you know it's more casual so when you use those shapes you know you want to make an interface which is just you know gives a feel of ease when you just say geometric you say you know show models you show as i say it shows professionalism it shows formality uh when there is an abstract random it should show, you know, you're doing something for kids. You might want to make a splash screen, which is very, very random, right? It looks playful. Now, this is an example of an app that is done for cancer patients, for them to exercise and all of that. So if you look at the selection of colors, you look at the shape of the objects, everything is rounded, okay? Very less corners. There are no corners really that are there. If you look at the selection of the font is also, it is smooth, it is rounded. There just no edges, no friction, no stress. Right? That is what shapes does to us. Look at this shape now. Okay? Everything is used. So there are rounded, there are angular, there is angular with very, very um, you know, less corners, there is all smooth corners. So much of confusion here. Is it giving one kind of a character? It is telling me, is it formal? Is it not formal? Nothing it is. It doesn't have any kind of a character to this. Right? So let's think about shapes of UI elements and the font that we select. Softness of colors. I'm keeping going. I'm, I'm keep, I keep going back to relate to all the concepts that we have seen. Orientation. I'm sorry. I have to rush through this but I can share the slide deck also with you guys later for you to go through it. Orientation, okay? What is orientation? What is orientation is that you are saying, okay, I will position elements on the screen in a manner that establishes that there is some relationship with each other, right? So, it, right there is a very good orientation and very good flow of things that are there right so this tells me about some of these steps i'm not reading as a visual don't read it okay just glance through it visually we are able to understand even if i make thick lines i'll be able to understand this is going to be the title there is there is this information uh in reference to the title Okay, there is a list that is here, there is information to each of these and then there is, this is where I have to start things. This is everything that is other than what is core as menu as options. If you look at the flow and if you look at how this is orienting your eyes, you will be able to see that it is doing it so well. Everything is just apt, apt. As per, when what is apt is as per the intended need. The intended need is that you know, somebody should be able to understand what are the steps. It should be able to, uh, you know, just take an action, follow some processes that are in the reference to that action. 
simple it's orienting your eyes okay here if you look at it it says that okay bananas there are 12 pieces of bananas and this is 22 rupees and this is telling me that this is okay this has got the stars 10% off and how many how many uh, that i can add here and then here it says 250 gram is this many this much and 1000 grams is this much here it is telling me 12 pieces and here so is there any kind of an orientation 10% off with rating is this the correct place to is this this 12 pieces should this information be here or should this information be somewhere here that is answer 22 rupees is going to be 12 pieces if it is 11 it is going to or is this information related to this so why is it with bananas it should be somewhere here right so how do you place elements so that they are there is there is a grouping there is a orientation to the eye again something something similar here where there is an orientation but this is not a bad example this is still a good example because i land up here i see uh, the the name uh, of this chair here i am able to see information i am taken able to take a decision the only aspect is this there is some aspects of dimensions that are there they I don't know how they are thought about if you are, you know, if you are reading habit is from left to the right, is this the right position? I'm not sure if there is a thought given there. Okay. And we have five minutes. So uh, I am really at the last slide. I really wanted to have a breakout room and have an activity here so that we can then look at Canva and see uh, as a group and be able to debate and come up with uh, is, you know, have they considered size, color, value, position, texture, shape, orientation, all of these aspects that we looked at, right, uh, sometime back. But then since we are, don't have the time, what I would do is I would skip this activity, activity, but I would expect, you know, or request you to when you are really reviewing something as a design, right, Keep all of these things in mind, especially how is the eye going to be traversing through the layout and what is the intent? What is the designers doing, trying to do here and have they do, done a good job? Everything on the net is not great. So see to it that, you know, you are very conscious and thoughtful at what you are referen referencing to and whatnot. Okay, these are some common mistakes and just because we are two, three minutes away from the end of the session, I would just try to summarize it that you, what you have to do, how do you avoid some of these mistakes is by creating a clear hierarchy so that a viewer knows where they should initially focus their attention and how they should be moving on in the direction of the, uh, the composition that you have worked on. Okay, don't try to emphasize everything. If you try to emphasize everything, the whole thing is lost, right? Something that we saw in that banana uh, uh, page, uh, description page, that everything was emphasized. What do you expect the user to really refer to? Give them a direction, tell one is a hero. Secondary, uh, there are second sub -hero, you know, heroes or supporting actors. And then there are tertiary also, tell them. If you have created a contrast, the viewer expects the contrast to, to mean something. If you are putting bright colors in places where we are highlighting content, it better be meaningful, right? Just don't highlight things because you are supposed to be using maximum branding colors. Every color has a meaning, so use it thoughtfully, carefully. We saw that in the example where red was used for the bank banking app and it was used absolutely incorrectly. Alignment helps to communicate. It helps to communicate a lot of things. You can group, you can sequence, you can reduce the visual clutter, right? So alignment is helpful. It helps you organize. It helps you direct a lot of aspects. And I think we are at 12. So I'll leave this open for discussion, questions, thoughts. I'm sorry, it has been a monologue. I wanted this to be a bit more interactive, but yeah. Any thoughts? Was this helpful? Uh, all this, these are concepts that, you know, we're kind of aware about. 
anything that comes to your mind you can just unmute there is nothing wrong correct here just just if we can spend two three minutes uh rupali mahendra yes uh can you give me some uh, uh, glance or something primary and secondary color how we can choose that primary just as you said the red color is banking color and that is a primary color so uh, i'm not getting that uh, like sometimes uh, aise hota hai na ki wo choose karna hi padta hai hame so hum log wo kaise kar avoid kare ki nahi kar sakte red color hai तो ये रीजन है तो ये नहीं कर सकते वो कैसे कर सकते लाइक गुड क्वेश्चन कलर इज अ कलर थियोरी इज अ कम्प्लीटली अ बिग डोमेन इन इटसेल्फ राइट सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वी कैन नॉट जस्ट प्लेनली कैटेगराइज एंड से रेड एंड ऑल टिंस ऑफ शेड्स एंड टोन्स ऑफ रेड गोल टू द कैटेगरी ऑफ अलर्ट राइट एज अ बिगर प्रैक्टिस हम लोग बोल रहे कि येस रेड इज एन अलर्ट इज वॉचिंग एंड दैट इज यूनिवर्सली यू नो वी आर वायर दैट वे right so you see fear when you want to show fear you are using red right you mm. see blood that is where we started right as mm. human we are carrying all of this knowledge inherently red you Correct. see blood. that is why fear right that is why stress you use all reds if there is a branding that is red how do you use it how much amount do you use it where do you use it इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वैल्यू क्या है वो रेड का वैल्यू क्या है हम उसका रिड्यूस कर सकते हैं टोन कैन वी टेक इट स्लाइटली टू अ ग्रेश साइड कैन वी एड मोर यू नो शेड टू इट कैन वी मेक इट डार्कर राइट और डू वी वॉन्ट टू मेक इट लाइटर कंप्लीटली बेस्ड ऑन दिस इज दिस इज इन समथिंग रिलेटेड टू मनी बट योर टॉपिक वुड बी समथिंग एल्स सो रेड इंपॉर्टेंट या so these discussions and these thought processes are very very important right so like for example in a generally you will say assessment hai quiz hai feedback dena hai you would say a tick and a cross cross you give a red how big that cross is going to be is that going to be demotivating my user also there is empathy that is there right mm -hmm. while some of these concepts could be ux related less user interface related, but there is really very less i would say uh, you know gap between where where ui ends and where ux stands on all of that right so you have to we have to understand all of these aspects also correct right? so color is a very and all of these are nothing is the nothing is more critical than the other all of these are interrelated and all of these have to be given a thought yes correct. yeah anything else Yes, Rupal is Arup here. Yes, Arup. Yeah, can you please go to the screens where the uh, you are comparing the two screens that uh, with a child one? Ha, sure. Ye wala. Yes, yes, yes. This one, yeah. Ha. So, ye ye difference ke jo jo small dots or big dots is size hai. So, what is the uh, what it ke convey the message? Uh, ha. So, kya hai na ye eye tracking devices hai. So, all these hmm. eye tracking devices they create a heat map. Hmm. okay this is a heat map that gets created what happens what is a heat map is that there are so many people that are testing this layout and then testing this layout uh, so while they are testing this layout what happens is where does the first gaze pause and how long that gaze pause is something that they track if yeah. it is really red that means yahi pe zyada time gaze off hua hai right fixate hua hai that is the right word it is a fixation so here what it is showing you is these big dots are fixations okay 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 and these this is where the fixation is there but it's less and there is no fixation here user did not pause here okay 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 thank you right? so imagine if you have something important that you have placed as add to cart a user ne dekha hi nahi wo
okay i don't want to hold on uh, if we are through with the session uh, thank you everybody for your time i know it is really uh, important thanks everybody's schedules are uh, extremely tight and you've given this time for this one hour session i hope this has been useful um, and let me know if you want me to uh, you know deep dive on any of these specific subjects or anything more in the reference to this because this is very close to my heart uh, as user interface design or design as a whole right so yes thank you everyone thank, thank you, you rupali uh, thank, thank you thank you